In this video, we're going to use Excel to explore Pascal's triangle. And we'll look at a few patterns, including some very cool visual patterns. Okay, so let's get started. Now, Pascal's triangle starts with two rows like this with ones. And um, I'm going to be doing the right triangle version of Pascal's triangle. Often in schools, people see the equilateral triangle version. They're really the same thing. Um, the right triangle is kind of smashed up against the left wall, and it's just a lot easier to do in Excel. Okay, so I want a column of ones here, and I'm just going to do this as equals the one above it. We'll drag down, get a column of ones. I want to kind of discourage students from typing 11111. A lot of times they'll want to just do that. That'll seem like the easiest thing to do, but once you have a little more experience with Excel, it's clear that's not the easiest way to do things. Okay, so we get a lot for one formula here in Pascal's triangle. Get the whole thing with one formula pretty much. So we start with the equal sign, and we're going to add the term diagonally up and to the left to the term right above. We enter, click here, drag right, now you notice there's some extra zeros here, that's fine. Don't need to worry about them. And then we'll go down. And I have the first eight rows of Pascal's triangle here. Now if you did this on a full screen, it wouldn't be a problem to, to do a lot more than that. So let's take a look at one important pattern in Pascal's triangle. Let's look at the sum of the rows. So I'm going to do this in column K and get the magnifying glass. We'll, we'll, use, um, we'll use this little sum button here, the big sigma. Um, and you see that gives us what we want. It's good to check, but A2 to J2, that's, that's the row. And Excel automatically puts in zeros when the cell is blank, which is why we got all those extra zeros. And we drag this down. And look at that. It looks like the sum of the rows is powers of 2. And this is a very important and interesting property, one that students who have the background should definitely look at a variety of ways to prove. But it's pretty interesting whether you know how to prove it or not. Um, we could also play around changing, changing Pascal's triangle a little bit. Like, what if I put a 2 here? It gives kind of an interesting pattern doesn't really have a pattern up here, but then it seems like it's doubling. Maybe I should make the whole thing start with twos, because some of these initial conditions are one at a time things. And look at that, I'm back to having sums of powers of two, except they're um, different powers of two. Double what I had before, I think. So there's a lot more exploration we could do with, with these points, but let's move on. And I'm going to go to the new sheet. Now, a lot of the really fun patterns with Pascal's triangle are visual. So let's look at how we can make some visual patterns on Excel. And this is really pretty stunning. I actually just learned how to do this fairly recently. So we'll start as we started before. And um, actually, this time, let me just drag the ones down. I'm not going to try to change them like I did before. Now, instead of doing the formula the way I did before, I'm going to do a formula involving mods. And it, we're going to look at Pascal's triangle mod 2, which is a really fancy way to say that instead of doing the triangle as we did before, we're going to just put a 1 for every odd entry and a 0 for every even entry. So what I do is I do mod and then my number here is the same as I did before, A2 plus B2. But then I'm going to do with a divisor of 2, meaning this gives me the remainder when I divide by 2. So if it's even, it'll be 0. If it's odd, it'll be 1. And then I move over again like I did before. Lots of extra zeros. So I have some 1s and zeros going on here. Now. Um, this is an activity that people often have students do coloring by hand, and, it, and that's a nice activity to do. Here's how to, here's how to do it with Excel, though. So what I want to do is uh, something called a conditional formatting. 
I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all the cells that just say a one by a colored cell and all the cells that say a zero by a by an empty cell okay so I'm gonna highlight everything I want and I go to the format menu now conditional formatting is uh, get the magnifying glass conditional formatting is high up on my list here because I just used it but you might have to actually click here and then find it on the list um, but I go to conditional formatting okay and I have all these conditions so if cell value is and I want to say equal to I don't know if this is hard to see and get the magnifying glass here alright so if the cell value is equal to we're gonna say if it's first we'll do for if it's equal to one okay and then I need to go to the format menu here and I think I just want to color it in, let's say I'll color it in blue. Alright, so if the cell value is 1, I'll color it blue. Oh, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the font um, white. Alright, so that'll, that'll just take away the number, so I'll just have a blue cell. Alright, so let's do that. And then I want to add another condition that if the cell value is equal to zero what I'll do is um, well I'll stick with no color but I also want to do that thing where I make the font white so it doesn't show up okay so let's see if this works and there we go okay actually the ones are showing up I made a mistake there because what I want to do is I don't want to make my font um, white on the blue. I want to actually make it blue. Okay. And you know, you make a lot of mistakes when you're doing things like this, and, and that's really okay. And I think in teaching, you know, I'm not going to edit out all the mistakes either because I think students really need to see that that the teachers make mistakes too. And doing well in math is about dealing with making mistakes really it's not about not making mistakes which some of them are have really gotten that mistaken impression so to speak okay now we could see a lot more of this if we make this a whole lot smaller so I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna format the column width to be um, only 0.5 you know I actually never checked what the units are on this they're different for the column and the rows and we'll format the row height to be four. I played around with this before and that looks pretty square. Okay, and now I'm gonna find this tiny little cell and drag it over and down. I see that I'm gonna be missing a piece in here because I didn't drag. I think I need in here we will drag this down. Now obviously I could have done this before I shrunk the screen. But there we go. Isn't that nice? Um, this is part of Pascal's Triangle Mod 2 and um, this makes a little bit of something called a Sierpinski gasket. Now you can add more conditions so we so a really nice next step would be to try this in Mod 3, Mod 4, etc. And that, that'll give you the remainder dividing by 3 or by 4. So if you want to do mod 3, you can do three different colors, etc., etc. So um, this is an introduction to Pascal's Triangle using Excel. Enjoy.